run so what we've done is we've left this camera just basically running on m42 for probably the best part of two hours now so in some ways this is the best image you're going to see all night <laughs> but what we can do is just kind of show some of the features um, a lot of people i'm sure will be familiar with the infinity software but it allows us you know, we, we can do things like uh do auto range and there's a number of selections we can get to just kind of display automatically what the images will look like. Uh, and what we can also do is go down to the, these histogram sliders and we can then select things like the black level ourselves. And quite a lot of the fun is to be had just tinkering around with some of these. And we can use them in real time to kind of display different parts of the image. Uh, we've been in 2x2 two two, which means we rather than 16 megapixel image we've only got a 4 megapixel image but then we haven't got a 4 megapixel screen anyway here anyway so we can still zoom in and there'll be more detail to be had uh, just by zooming in okay so one thing I want to do is on the attic horizon itself we have these different levels of gain so we try a low gain what we should be able to see is more color within the brighter stars but we may see less uh, less detail in the fainter regions that's the theory let's see how that works out so we do get it take an image again so yeah so we're now on to low gain setting so we might expect you know, it's got more dynamic range but we might expect to have more noise in the lower parts of the image okay so it's, it's a subtle difference uh, to, to be honest I think a lot of these things are going to look a bit subtle yes obviously yeah uh, the thing, the it should be telling us that we've got more colour in the brighter stars if we were interested in that. So we have a redder star there and something distinctly bluish there. Uh, let's stop that again and then switch over to this high gain setting. We don't do dark frames in the Affinity software, so this is again something that uh, myself and much more, you know, it's much more Chris uh, Golden's work on this one. Is we've done some techniques to identify where the hot pixels are on the image, and it goes in and it goes in and fixes those hot pixels. Yep. Uh, so we don't need to take a dark frame with them. Uh, and cooling on a day with. with What I'm seeing that I really quite like in this image, uh, we'll we'll stop it in a minute, but it actually gets a really nice colour in the flame here. Yes, now, that's, very, very nice actually. Uh, I've taken this a number of times uh, with num, you know, it's like the traditional red, green, blue filters, and yeah, it's it's kind of I, I struggle getting a decent colour in the flame, and this is probably as good as I've ever seen it, which. Uh, yeah, it's quite quite nice. Quite yeah, good detail. There is a lot of the. It's not as nebula. obviously it's not as deeper as I've ever gone in terms of looking at the no. horse head, but uh, the actual the actual color rendition rendition of it is not bad at all. No. And this is even so. This is one of the benefits also we've got with the very large chip of the horizon. I say we've been two by two, so we've already given away four four times the resolution here than what we've got. But, yep. Ah, uh, still there's there's lots of. Lots of we can do to kind of zoom in on pieces. Yeah. Just to see, to see how much of those spiral arms. Yeah, you can see the dust lanes over there, near closer to the core. Yeah, and in the spiral arm. This is one of those things where the screen we're on is quite angle sensitive, so it, it depends. Is. It is. So what's getting transmitted may not really reflect what we're seeing it but certainly yeah it's uh, this is the sort of thing that 
you know, if you're showing friends and relations some interesting objects in the sky. Yes, yes, everybody can relate that to a galaxy. Actually, you, you this type of objects uh, like M81 is it requires a significant sized telescope to actually display the spiral arms in any decent um, glory. <laughs> And uh, and over here with a four-inch refractor and uh, a few, well, nine actually, thirty-second exposures, uh, you can easily see the spiral arms. You can see the dust lanes, uh, and I mean, it's it's yeah. quite nice, quite beautiful. People like to see these things, and uh, yeah. no, not everybody ha actually have twenty. Is this camera going to replace the infinity range and can it be used for long exposure as well? So first off, yes, it absolutely can. So it's more able to be used as a traditional astrophotography camera than the infinity camera. So yes. the horizon, the horizon we really designed to be much more of a traditional uh, camera and it's got CMOS sensor, but it's, it was the first time that we really felt that we could introduce a CMOS sensor into our line of cameras, yes. which are traditionally not, you know, they're not, most of the attic cameras are not really meant to be used for video astronomy. They're much more the traditional kinds of uh, astrophotography. And the horizon really fits in with that range of cameras. But because it's such fast readout, it then has this cross purpose of being able to use for video astronomy, yeah. video astronomy as well. Uh, so... so on raw pixels, if there was two pixels to be spread amongst three pixels it would basically yeah. just do repeat one pixel twice and on blended it would average so you got oh, okay maybe I can see that can I yeah actually no so yeah I can so sorry Don. so if we zoom in we're on raw pixels which is the quicker way of zooming in and out so we see this star here is pixelated and if we zoom in to blend those pixels it, yes it looks, oh, yeah, it looks totally. more a lot more natural Yes, yes. Uh, but I imagine this is now going to be a bit more clunky in terms of zooming in and out. Whereas all pixels. Ah, yeah, no, this is something. It's gone black and white here. We'll talk about this in a minute. Because in advanced settings, we can now go to color into the bin mode. And that will make a difference, and I'll mention that in a minute. Uh, so what we had just a second ago was, yeah, basically a simulation of what would happen with a color, with a color CCD. That when you bin it, you lose the color, and you end up getting a black and white image. Now CMOS cameras, which the Ryzen is a CMOS camera, uh, then what we're getting there is. Uh, you know, it's not possible to combine those pixels on the chip. But what we can do is we can simulate it by combining the pixels off the chip and by mathematically adding them together. Uh, if we do it on the chip as a CCD, basically we, we have roughly four times the signal to noise on doing a 2x2 two two bin. Uh, in CMOS land, uh, we actually only have a, a doubling of the signal to noise ratio. I, I won't go into it, but it's yeah mathematically it's, it's about half as good as binning on a ctd but the benefit is we can actually maintain we can retrieve the color data from it so that that is a benefit on the cmos and why we do it is uh the same as we would normally debayer a color or one shot color image you end up with then three color planes red green and blue all at the same resolution as the original image we then bin those three color planes uh, two by two uh, and in doing that then we increase the signal to noise uh, we increase the signal to noise by two times so that's the advantage of binning and it's something we've introduced into the software quite recently to allow us to maintain to keep the color on on this binning so we're getting suggested that It, it is it is a faint object, but yeah, it, it is a case that we can see it. And we we can see where it is. 
Yeah. Uh, we're not. If we left it on for for uh, maybe half yeah. an hour, uh, we now are in at four frames. Yeah. So four minutes. Uh, if we'd left it like this for half an hour, it would start to become quite um, the spiral arms that we are starting to started to see below it. Yeah. Uh, they would start to become a little bit brighter. And, yeah. uh, we did do this with. Actually, yes, you can start to see a bit more as we zoom in. Yeah, you see the hydrogen alpha regions yeah. uh, starting to appear right there. We in. did this with the Hyperstar C11 and the original Infinity camera uh, yeah, a couple a of years ago. And and that responded really quite well, really quite quickly. And it was just a much more aperture and a much faster scope. Yes, different. Yes, completely. But, uh, yeah, so um, this this is a really portable setup we've got just set up in front of us. So it's an HEQ5 and a four inch refractor. It's the sort of thing that you can pick up in one go, and we will do, I'm pretty certain, because in another half hour's time, it will be ready to go. So we've got M31, M32 as well, isn't it? Is that? Yeah, so M30, 110. Is that 110 of other weight? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, again, long, if we do long exposure, astrophotography, traditional stuff, it's quite nice to go and have a look at some of the NGC objects within M31. Yes. Uh, yeah, and uh, I mean, no, we're, we're, we'll be talking to people who know more than we do very quickly, but this is the first object that was generally accepted to be outside of our own, our own, uh, our own galaxy. Galaxy. Yeah. So this is the one that suddenly increased the size of our universe by uh, many, many fold.